dark match for the week of March 16th. I'm the Revolver Man. And I'm Digifox, the fox that rocks your socks. Hey, I'm Christopher Says, dark match is mastered on the monotone as usual. And as always, I am your foxy friend, Backlash, and wouldn't you know it, it is time once again for one of our most favorite segments, What is Iron Sheik tweeting now? <clears throat> if you are the real and show the respect for the Iron Sheik t-shirt, otherwise go fuck yourself. Hashtag Team Sheiky. <laughs> so everyone, go out and buy your Iron Sheik team sh- uh, I'm, I'm t-shirts. I'm going to buy one because if you don't have one and Sheik sees you, he will make you humble. I mean, it's I know I'm not in stuff I want for my birthday. I know I'm not in high school anymore, Back but up. like, I, I don't want to walk around college campus with uh, with uh, all that. Perfume. Hang on, let me get a look at this shirt. Is it actually good? It's not bad. Here. We'll uh, p- put it up on the video. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it up right here, and uh, there it is, so you guys can see it. All right. Mm. Oh, sweet man, that's not a bad. sweet shirt. Oh, Iron, I Iron Sheik has a posse. That's that's. I was hoping it would be uh, a silhouette of Iron Sheik with somebody in the camel clutch. <laughs> or, or possibly the one where he's, he's erect while facing Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> no. Why is it when I come back the penis joke start? It has nothing to do with you. <laughs> they've they've right. been going on when you were gone, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think a day goes by here in Dark Match where there isn't a dick joke. <laughs> we're, 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 come on, we're a bunch of slacker 20 somethings. Sorry, Digi. Right. <laughs> well, I, I'm a slacker 30 something. Hmm. Which is what? You guys will be in five years. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, and no. This is the slacker, for, and this is what, the slacker 40 something for us? <laughs> well, no, he's, he's, he's actually technically younger than me. But... Oh, really? Yeah. Why do we always call him the old man of Dark Match? Then? Well, it's it's because he sounds like the old man. I I, I sound more like a man child. <laughs> <laughs> They're uh. Oh, I can tell this is going to be a good show. It's about impact, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Uh... <laughs> and we and we don't want to talk about impact. <laughs> yeah, our our main event for the evening is not a match. It's a uh, Sting and Bobby Roode having a contract signing, which. Man, how many of those were there were there in the WWE last year? <laughs> or are you not talking about the, the promotion uh, in question? Uh, well, I haven't been on it a lot, and I've been saying this a lot, though, is that I prefer Impact with Russo, because at least when Russo was running wild, the shit was fun to talk about. Yeah. This is just mediocre. It's, it's good that you mentioned Russo, because there's actually something, a point that needs to be made... Um, and especially about like an angle that's going on uh, these days, the point is that like there's a rumor going around that even though Russo stepped down as the cre- as the head of creative and and even quit TNA completely, the his storylines were basically written and booked since uh, since October, and they they span for for an indefinite amount of time. Like I, I don't I don't know when no. when uh, Bruce Pritchard's stuff will go into no, effect. No, 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 no. They, they wouldn't have kept rolling with that if, if they let him go. Oh, no, believe okay. me. No, believe me, because I, I like, the, the, the contract signing ex- itself is like a taint amount to to that idea, in my opinion. Uh, the contract signing is one of the oldest wrestling tropes. No, but not not that itself, just the content of it, of which we'll get to. Um, well, I guess we'll see and argue about it. But, yeah. yeah um, we'll get to that when we get to that, but first we have to open the show up with uh, James Storm coming out, and basically he he says he's looking forward to winning the title at Lockdown. Victory Road hasn't even happened yet, and we're talking about Lockdown already. Oh, I wonder who's going to win the match at Victory Road then. The, the match at I, well, Revolver Man, I remind you, the match at Victory Road is not for the title. Oh, that's there is right. no World that's... Heavyweight Title being defended at Victory Road. Bobby oh, Roode has a match. I... Oh, Bobby no Roode. Who do you think you are, Bobby Roode, Davy Richards? <laughs> I had completely blocked that out. Okay, this is going to be an excuse to have the fucking 58-year-old Sting kick Bobby Roode's ass up and down the thing, but he well, won't lose the title. Well, we'll talk about Victory Road at the end of the show, but um, 
basically, he just cuts a promo on Bobby Roode, and it's a pretty good promo, I'll admit. The camera got a little bit too close to him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, just, just one of those, like, random nitpicky peeves. James Dunn always has good promos, though. So does Bobby Roode. I mean, hell, I'll go this far and say Sting has good promos when he's being fucking nuts. At least they're entertaining. But that's yeah. all they have right now is that they, they book their main event so weekly. It's, that it, yeah. The, the only thing that's keeping it afloat is raw talent by these guys. Yeah, it's have, it's the young. It's basically the young talent who who are very good at what they do, but are pretty much uh, this this like foundational morass of, of of shit that they're that they have to work against. They have yeah, to work, it's called have Garrett Bischoff. To... Mm. Like every everything that went on in 2010, pretty much. And we'll get to him. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Nonetheless, uh, before he could really make a, a big point about Rude, like, well, he, he basically says he's he's selfish, like like uh, Rude says himself. Uh, Bully Ray, basically, uh, he comes out and he kind of okay. tears down. Bully, Bully, yeah. Rude's, Bully Ray's new nickname to me is the Thigh Master. What the fuck? What is? What, who thought of this? He, I he don't has know. an obsession with this calves. Did, he's like, did Ray just like? was like sitting on his ass in the back one day and just thought, it would be hilarious. You know how women's wrestlers always have their tits out? What if I showed like one male body part constantly and he just randomly chose his lower legs? Yeah. I, that, I, I but bet. the sick part is he's gotten over with this. What the fuck? Yeah. No, because he's good. <laughs> like, oh, they were know, probably discussing that. They were like, Bully is probably one of the more experienced promo cutters. Let's see if he could he could... Uh, get over something really insignificant. And, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure this started on a bet. It's like, I, I can get over talking about my thighs. Calves. Calves, whatever. But yeah, and, and each week they look more and more like a plastic action figure, which like really is not against him. Like, it, it, it just looks so weird. Um, well, you know what I think this is getting over? Maybe the last person who gimmick was that they had godlike Mm. Uh, it's original and I'm a firm believer that anything original okay. unless you fuck it up majorly is automatically going to get over and again like uh, Baba does it pretty damn well but like yeah, nonetheless um, like the, the promo basically consists of, of Bubba saying like oh I, I smacked you in the, in the face with the chair and James Storm says well, yeah well I kicked you in the face to earn a number one contendership spot at lockdown uh but they they kind of they kind of duke it out verbally. Um, Bully Ray says Bef- before lockdown, I'm I'm gonna kick your ass at Victory Road. Uh, they're they're about to brawl out uh, brawl and they like maybe even throw down tonight. But Bubba says you're not gonna face me. You're gonna face one of the one of the toughest individuals in the back, Gunner. How, okay, how many? <gasps> not how, Gunner. He's so ask, intimidating. <laughs> How many takes did it take for Bubba not to fuck up saying that? Because I have to assume he could not get that out without laughing one take. Fucking Gunner! Who gives a shit about Gunner? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, t- it's hardly... You, you're going to face Gun- Kane. I'll, 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 tell, I'll name you three people who care about Gunner. Al Snow, Deal Brown, and Simon Diamond. <laughs> oh, God. Before a brawl happens, the, the, uh, the TNA road agents are basically say no no we got to save this and uh we got to save this for later on tonight and they they break it all up as they usually do and they get more over than most (laughs) probably chance during the commercial (laughs) after they after the cameras were enrolling they there were probably like prolonged chance that like that like uh socal val was motioning the the audience to stop (laughs) hey they are uh are they still calling them uh guest stars or go or uh co-stars whatever the hell they were calling them when hogan first showed up i don't know hmm. uh, but after that we have to get our daily dose of the knockout ah uh, yes it's it's gail kim and madison rain backstage 
And they're going at each other like, you lost us our titles! No, you lost the titles! I didn't lose the titles! Well, I didn't lose the titles! Because that's no, how they write the knockouts these days. The, 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 funny thing about, no, but the funny thing about these two like and in, in their tag gimmick and completely being at odds with each other is that they're 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 both like heels and they're and they're both like haughty and stupid enough never to never to break up as friends. <laughs> well, you know, one thing I was wondering is that uh, Madison Rain actually has gotten a title change turned over on a technicality before. We all know this. That was during the uh, when uh, Tara first grade debuted as the motorcycle girl. Mm-hmm. Why is she yeah. using her legal powers to overturn the fact that fucking Eric Young is obviously not a woman? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe th- I wouldn't be surprised if there was some oversight that they never actually specified that you have to be a woman to hold the knockouts t- tag title. Yeah. Well, th- then again, there's also Cody Diener. I think yeah. Eric Young just he he, oh. he literally transcends oh. these rules. <laughs> but, but the, the fact the fact of the matter also is like hey when you don't have people like Hamada and Taylor Wilde and you don't have uh, Sarita doing anything or fuck even Rosita then you you gotta um, you just gotta make do something different with the tag t- uh, the knockouts tag title so well considering that they've taken these two titles that nobody has given a shit about since they were created and actually made a somewhat interesting story out of them well, once again, it comes probably to the fact that Eric Young is just doing his own fucking thing and nobody ha- has any ability to stop him at this point. His momentum is just too big in the back. Hey, you know what? That's actually I something I want to say because we've actually been criticized a lot for our opinions of Eric Young. I, we get it. Eric Young is being very badly booked. He is being made to look stupid. But you know what? The man is having fun out there. And when Impact depresses us this much, makes us hate the wrestling business, it's just nice to see that someone is coming out of this with a smile on their face. That's why we like Eric Young, okay? Yeah, he's he's taking shit and turning it into a Sunday. I mean, like, wow, people actually enjoying themselves in wrestling? That's a concept we haven't heard of them since the early 90s, it seems. Yeah, I mean there there are like a lot of people who who like make the mistake of 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 like not doing any variations between their their like intense gimmick, like the 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 friggin' <laughs> can the <laughs> MMA tattoos. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we we go from the knockout segment to to Bobby Roode uh, wondering aloud about. Well, actually, we didn't get to the point of the knockouts. Uh segment because oh, yeah. Sting interrupts them while they're screaming at each other and says, Hey, you girls have got a match. And they're and it's against two different people, so you guys better get ready. <laughs> Gail's gonna so go up like, ah, 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 ah. Yeah. So we, we get booked Madison Rain versus Velvet Sky, which is going to be next, and then later in the night it's Gail Kim versus Mickey James. So you know the uh, matches we've been seeing over and over again for the past how many months? They're yeah. gonna happen again. They're, they're, it's stuff that happens once, and then they kind of drop it for for a couple months, and then then it happens again. At, at the very least, that it's not like WWE, who's been, especially with their mid card workers running WWE, who where every match has to be at least a best of three series. <laughs> yeah, like every feud, no, every feud in the WWE, like in latter 2011, mid to, to late 2011, was a best of eight series. Seriously, like that Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton, Randy Orton and Christian. Um, nonetheless, that that's not important right now. You bring uh, up Randy Orton on my first time back in a while. What are you thinking, man? Well, if you're, <laughs> you're going to fill in tomorrow, then uh, there there will be a significant amount of Randy Orton. So <laughs> not not as much as oh. others, but Randy Orton is Randy Orton, so. <laughs> yeah, he's still upset over it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, let, 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 let's move on, because next we have Bobby Roode, and basically being his heel self, in which he is the voice of the IWC, saying, like, oh, why is Sting putting himself in this main event when there's so many other guys who are more deserving? More on that later. Yeah. Okay. And he's supposed to be oh. the heel. I was just about to say, when your bad guy is making better points than your good guys, you have seriously screwed something up bad. <laughs> 
Well, that's the point, because they know that people who like TNA don't think like that. So they're like, <laughs> let's just have our bad guys say what all the people who know what they're talking about are thinking, and that'll get them over as a heel. Yeah. Well, well I don't know. You, you think that that has to be an accident, because that is such clever parody, that could not have come out of the heads of TNA. <laughs> So, um, sort of killing the that promo kind of killed the the quote unquote hype for Madison Rain versus Velvet Sky being right after that segment. But <laughs> that's that's the next thing that that comes up. And my God! Um, oh come on! This is the company that said no more commercial breaks, and we'll be right back after this commercial break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, match is. I barely remember this match. I mean. What I remember from it was just these two like being completely uncoordinated, not looking like they're active. Like I, I have to give the sh- I have to give the shout out to Lords of Pain, which is uh, providing us our recap. They actually said we have no time for any pigeons getting loose because the match starts immediately. No, I, I think Taz actually said that on commentary. <laughs> Honestly, because like, I was actually trying to listen to some of the commentary because apparently Taz can be really, really cracked out. Because I'll miss because we miss stuff all the time, and then later we're watching Botchman and like Taz said what? <laughs> oh, if if I guess Taz has gone to the chemical relief to get past him back now. <laughs> Oh yeah, he, he's just, he's just saying whatever comes to his mind at this point. Well, he's done that for the longest time. Remember when uh, <laughs> they were trying to get, I believe it was Sky's finisher over, and every time she did, Taz would be like, "What the fuck was that?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's definitely no uh, Dixie Carter like, definitely isn't like, shouting over the headsets. <laughs> he was like accidentally burying Ray or uh, Sky. Completely just by being Taz. I, I think that was actually Lacey Von Erich. And oh, yeah. You can't, that makes oh. Sense. can't bury that woman any more than she buries herself. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> That's a fair Apparently. point. And That's a fair point. She'll, she'll probably uh, do it admittedly, but but man, this this match, uh, like, if if I could compare it to something, and like, it's unfortunate because these two have been have been like working for years. I mean, so is Kelly Kelly, but. If you watch someone like Caitlyn in the ring, you notice that she doesn't look active. Like, she doesn't look like she knows how to, like, that she's actually, like, intent on doing anything to her opponent because she, she just walks, like, very awkwardly around. Um, it's like I, there are probably, like, handfuls of other uh, women who, who've done that uh, past who just never made it. But Madison Rain and Velvet Sky were pretty much exemplary of this. Like, well, this is they, a point that. I read on Lance Storm's site, I mean, if anybody's ever never seen it, you really should go, it's called stormwrestling.com, mm-hmm. where he talks about people who are supposed to despise and hate each other, behaving very calmly and rationally in a match, doing very technical stuff, when they should be trying to rip each other's voice boxes out. I mean, but see, this match obviously, like, isn't the case of that, like, they're... And that's the thing, like, the beautiful people broke up, but it was, it, they kind of fizzled out. Like, they didn't really, like, Angelina Love had her zombie thing, um, Madison <laughs> Rain had, had her Tara thing. Like, they they probably had, I, if I remember correctly, there were a couple disputes, but, like, it wasn't really that big of a deal. These two aren't the biggest of enemies, but even just, like, competition, like, it doesn't look genuine. Like, I, I, just, I like, like to think of it as they all just kind of got dis- distracted and wandered away. Mm. That's, that's a pretty good way to, to sum up what happened to the beautiful people. Because this is a problem I've been noticed a lot in TNA, like since its inception. The super heel groups never truly end. I mean, hell, look at Immortal. How the hell do you even classify Immortal at this point? Because apparently it still exists, maybe. Immortal I mean, is, is like vaporware at this point. Yeah, as much as I, I, I like ECW and, and Bubba, like he's kind of immortal, like it, to the extent of like indie fans. It's like it's around, but nobody really talks about it, and you never see what they're doing. Mm. But um, well, everybody's affiliated. Who's bad is affiliated with immortal, but there's nobody who's immortal. 
You could argue guess... the main event mafia is still around in some degree. <laughs> yeah, a lot of them are just at Ring Cow King. Yeah. <laughs> or just Steiner. I mean, he's, he's the only one important. Oh, Steiner. Is Steiner, is, is Steiner still part of Immortal, or is he completely... He's, he's, he's in Ring Cow King uh, full-time, as far as I know. Oh, you never see him. On... <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I hope he's cutting promos in Hindi. Yeah. None, nonetheless, that would, um, that would be so glorious. The the match ends uh, with uh, Madison getting a, a handful of tights roll up and and she wins. And the thing and again the thing about this is, like, I'll I'll say again, I I never begrudge them for for like doing what they enjoy because like again these two have been in the business for for years and they 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 do work hard. It's just like I look at Madison Rain, and I I also know that she she had has a considerable amount of time in Shimmer as a face. I mean, I love Rain on the mic. Like I, I think she's she's a good personality, but I it just didn't work. <laughs> I... And so, some are Jingus is raging over the roll up. I I don't know. I'll I'll give Madison Rain. She's okay when she doesn't get into parent voice. Hmm. Yeah. Look. Look. Lo- Let's not do the screechy voice anymore. Uh, well, uh, but yeah, uh, say that to every woman wrestling is that if they keep <laughs> your voice outside the highest octaves, they tend to be okay. Yeah, Use your it, indoor though. voice. They could that goes some, for some YouTube like, You're the worst fucking offender. Like like compare Kelly Kelly and Vicky Guerrero, for instance. Um, oh. but Vicky. That's part of her gimmick at this point. Yeah, yeah, that's Look Vicky's at, gimmick. Like Karen, she as was, it is Madison's. Karen Vicky was just does a it bitch. well. Yeah, Karen was just shrill in yeah. general. And so we we should stop talking about Karen because if we say her name too many times, she might reappear. Oh, that's she's kind of she's kind of like Lars in that regard. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's move on. Uh, Matt Morgan's talking to his skinnier clone. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, this is shorter. That too. But I. <laughs> Like that's it's pretty much. I I love you, man. Good job, bro. Not about undefeated streak, according to Crimson. Uh, they're they're setting up for uh, one of them to turn to heel. I don't care what. Probably Crimson, but I don't care. Oh, it's gonna be yeah, Morgan because that's Morgan's gimmick. He fucks over his tag part. This has happened like six times. Well, yeah, but you know, Crimson's the one who's who's acting like an asshole. So so then Matt Morgan's kind of like a fourth rate uh, Shawn Michaels. <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna be a swerve, brother. Wow! I never thought I would put Matt Morgan and Shawn Michaels in the same sentence. Well, he does do. <laughs> well, he does warm up the band before he does his big boot finish. So, wow. it's a fifth <laughs> rate Shawn Michaels. Yeah, I guess so. But our next match is Crimson versus Samoa Joe, and ah, uh, I mean, uh, summation is but... actually. I like this. For, for one reason, and but that doesn't necessarily have to do with this match. It's that it's the Samoa Joe looked quite a bit stronger, and it's like TNA. See what happens when you actually book him in some form as dominant. That spills over to to his next wrestling matches. I know like he was built up so much, but like you can't just have him job week in and week out. There has to be some variety. When I, when I saw this match, I all I could think was is that. Remember when Samoa Joe had Crimson's gimmick, but was about yeah. a billion times better with yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> Emphasis on billion. Oh. Um, uh, yeah, Crimson still looks like shit. Joe looks more confident. His his moves look look good. Crimson. Joe doesn't have the stupidest tattoos on fucking earth pasted all over him. That probably helps. Yeah, he, he doesn't work for Umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> I would love... If they booked Crimson as infected by the T virus, <laughs> and they like tape a tentacle to his back or something really cheap, like a, like something out of Plan Nine, and he like tried to infect people. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, you know. <laughs> anyways, this, anyways, the match ends with Joe going for the muscle buster, but. Morgan jumps up on the apron and Magnus starts brawling with him. Joe gets distracted and eats a spear from Crimson. One, two, three, Crimson wins. Yeah, what never really felt the spear. You know what's That's sad? What finish. You know what's really sad about Crimson? I know we just... Edge's spear looked better than Crimson's spear. Yeah, that's kind of sad. Crimson looks really like sad. he's 
eat, could eat Edge without a problem. And Edge still pulled off that so much better. The, 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 the dreaded hug. Um, and I was, I, was, I was making this point earlier when I was watching this show is is I, I still can't tell who's heel, who's face. I probably talked about this before, but it doesn't really fucking matter at this point. No, it doesn't. It's They're like just fighting me total face. apathy. <sighs> like, Morgan's interfering in the match, which is a pretty heelish thing to do. I, and and uh, Magnus is defending his... Uh, tag partner which is a face thing to do but yeah it's it's like the the heels are all are all jerk offs the the faces are are anti-heroic jerk offs like what what more can you really say wow the uh, we were talking about before but the knockouts title tag titles are starting to get booked better than the men's tag titles oh (laughs) and that's pretty fucking sad Anyways, at least we, at least we know who the good guys are in the women's tag division. <laughs> that yeah, is sad. The good, the good guys, because there actually is a guy. Yes, yeah. <laughs> the good mixed gender team in a network that bans intergender violence. Anyways, next we get a backstage segment with Austin Aries, and he's coming out to the ring to celebrate because. Apparently, Austin Aries is now officially the longest-running X Division champion. 182 days. This is a fact that kind of depresses me. Doesn't depress me. Are you serious? That's all it took? Yeah, it's... it's, I I guess they they thought, like, to make the high-flying, the flippy-do people... And I'm not... I'm I'm just, like... I'm just speaking from uh, from a different perspective. I'm, I'm not actually calling them all that, but... Right. They, to make him as exciting as possible, you also have to have so many title changes. Um, well, yeah, it just it makes the exhibition title look like a cheap horror. I, it's like... I don't and, know, at, I, at least Austin Aries has been regularly defending the title. It's not like Cody Rhodes with the Intercontinental title where he's had like five people he's defended it again. Fair so play. Austin Aries has been regularly defending that, so it doesn't depress me as much as that. But still, Honestly, I like, no over Austin Aries at this point. I mean, I'm, I'm cool with, I'm cool with Aries. Um, and plus, like he he presents a video package with a lot of great fo- edited together incredibly well, to the point where you wonder where the, why this kind of footage isn't on everyone's uh, dick, uh, everyone's Pandatron. Like, all it is is just like them standing in front of blue flames and some weird like computer graphic that they just keep looping. Like <laughs> their, their trons are fucking awful, and like having actual performance or, or wrestling footage would seriously help all of them. God, yeah, the, tr- the, the Trons are so fucking... Uh. Like, I remember when the Trons broke during the pay-per-view <laughs> last year. And the- it was last year's <laughs> Victory Road, I believe. <laughs> oh, yes! It oh. was! It was, and we thought that was going to be the biggest fuck-up of the night! <laughs> Oh, and then Ben Anderson versus RVD ended with with such a shitty no contest fi- finish. We thought that was going to be the worst. <laughs> and then, we're laughing about and this. then Matt Morgan and Hernandez had that horrible first blood match where that ended with ketchup cu- falling on Matt Morgan's chest, and we thought that was going to be the biggest fuck up of the night. <laughs> oh, I now, remember that shit. This victory road. This victory road. I wonder if they're going to top last. Oh, I hope so. It would be so glorious. <laughs> Well, as long as, long as it's not egregious like it was last year, as long as it's just really bad and funny. <laughs> right? Yeah, I, th- I think we'll save the victory road shit till the end of tonight's show. Yeah, we'll exactly. talk more about victory road at the end. But <laughs> anyways, Austin Aries is basically celebrating himself, which brings out Zema Ion, and basically they just cut promos on each other. It, here's here's the problem. Almost a parallel of uh, what's happening with Bobby Roode and James Storm and like everyone else that's, that has like any modicum of talent. I'm cool with Zima on the mic, but and I'm cool with Austin Aries on the mic and both of them in the ring. But Zima Ion's a fucking so, solid heel when he breaks a, a wholesome face's neck and celebrates about it, mentions it in this promo. Yeah. Like, you want to talk about who's the heel, who's the who's the face? To this. Another example of that. 
This, this is a problem. Yeah, that's that a little bit of moral distance. It, this more, is more. the problem I really have with this match. It's heel versus heel. Why are we getting this? It's, are, yeah, it's, it's a match it's more, where we don't want to see either guy win. And it's the same thing they're doing with the knockouts match. More more undermining of talent, really. And um, Austin, Austin Aries, Aries is, heels. is Austin Aries is the smoke asshole. Sigma Ion is the reckless, violent sociopath. And with, like, uh, we're passion. hoping that, like, fucking... Jay Lethal comes in with a shotgun and cleans them both out for us. <laughs> you guys are fucking up my division. <laughs> I remember when I won that title belt and I got confetti and then I lost it at a house show. Here's your screen time, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Basically, what they do is they... Ion and Aries jaw jack and... Uh, well, what they do is Austin Aries has the bottle of champagne, so he pours them on, yeah. on a glass and says, "Here, have this glass of champagne, and please do not throw it back in my face." Let's toast to me, to my 182 yeah, what, days as exhibition champion, and do. many more. <laughs> and I am throws the glass like, of champagne in his face. Oh, here, here's God, a glass that you but can hit me betrayal. with. Here's totally retarded. Thing. Here's one very good thing: he didn't blade off of it. <laughs> I get, oh, I, guess only I, here, I get that at first, but yeah. No, Rick, Rick, Rick Flair was not. In this I segment. wish I had remembered <laughs> earlier. No, no, no. That, that didn't have to do with Rick Flair because, and it, but it does have to do with who's in the next segment. Because uh, I, I wish I, we had remembered that earlier. Gunner, the man so threatening, he bladed to beer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Aries sprays Ion with the champagne, and you don't do that to. The, Hair are this beautiful, so he flips out and leaves. <laughs> but yeah, let's talk about that, that segment with Gunner. I can't believe I said that with a bit of excitement. Um, we have uh, the love child of um, of Lewis Black and Pendulette, uh Abyss Unmasked, or or Joseph Park Esquire. I, I I'm still unsure if that's Abyss or not because it looks too short to be Abyss. The uh, presence. So, did like somebody at TNA say, you know, Kane's backstory is weird as hell? Abyss, like more more talent fall. undermined by the booking. Like he he could he could definitely do so, like present no, something I'm, different. I'm just saying that apparently somebody decided that Kane's story was good, but it wasn't contradictory enough for him. So now we have <laughs> Abyss's completely sane brother wandering about. Well, would you rather they brought back Judas Macias? I'd rather they brought back Father James Mitchell. Nah, James Mitchell has too much self-respect to work for TNA anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Think about when I was that. watching this, I, I had no idea who this was. I thought he was like, oh, is, he, is this like Eric Bischoff's lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> I oh, thought it was just like hilarious. some nondescript suit. Eric Bischoff. Oh no! Oh, oh God! Now, now they're gonna do that shit. <laughs> Why did I say that? <laughs> oh, it's gonna happen. You want to? You guys want to talk about something better? Yes, please. Oh, and but too bad it's like the only little bitty segment they have. ODB and Eric Young are wedding planning. <laughs> Oh, Where, where's that, Alicia Fox when you need her? <laughs> wait for ODB's dress. I, I, I'm curious what they're going to put her in. Camo wedding gown. These <laughs> things exist. And all of a sudden, when they're doing their wedding, which they'll have at the ring, obviously, all of a sudden Kurt Angle shows up with a hatchet again for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, they, because they're... Because they are talking about places where they could have their wedding, and of course they eventually decide, like, let's have it in the ring. Hey, that's where we met, and and shit. And I'm just and I'm just sitting here screaming, "It's a trap! It's a trap! Don't do it! We want this story to have a happy ending." Kurt Angle's gonna show up with a hatchet because ever since that shit with uh, his ex-wife and uh, Jeff, he has simply hated weddings, and he will attack any wedding he happens on. <laughs> And, it, and he's going to travel back in time and attack wedding. He's going to travel <laughs> back in time and 
to test in Stephanie's wedding and show up. Yeah, in, that. <laughs> in the royal wedding for some reason. He's gonna he's gonna travel back to Randy Savage's wedding. Yeah. He's gonna travel yeah. back to, to Billy and Chuck's uh, wedding, which didn't even happen. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, speaking That's an of awesome Angle, storyline, make it happen. Speaking yes. of Kurt Angle, um, you, you the, the good thing about him you, is that he's not creepy anymore. He's he's just he's just douchey and over the top. That's a good Kurt Angle, but he's he's now uh, threatening Garrett Bischoff. So who cares? <laughs> Calls him Bischoff. <laughs> He stole that from Jim Cornette. Jim Cornette's been calling Bischoff Bischoff for about, like, seven years now. Mm. Uh, Not much more to say about this. Um, Kurt. Nope. On, you get Kurt Angle cutting a promo saying, like, oh, I'm going to face Garrett Bischoff in a five-minute challenge, and blah, 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 blah. Then I'm going to beat up Jeff Hardy, blah, 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 blah. That's all I got. I and yeah, it happens. And- Thing is so happy that he gets to fight Bobby Roode at uh, McHenry Road. Eh. Yeah, they they it's spend like, the whole night cutting these promos with that, that look like they're shot on shitio. Yeah, and they all and they all just to to a to a promo. I'll never understand Contracts. why yeah, they, they do this the whole night. I'll never understand why they do that stealth shaky cam thing. When it's obvious that the wrestler knows the camera is there. Actually, one thing I want to point out that we missed at the beginning. I noticed that at the beginning of the show, when Bully Ray was coming out, or no, or no, when James Storm was coming out at the beginning of the night, a fan had a camcorder in the ring, which, good God, ah. they allow those. And the cameraman <laughs> is just looking through that guy's viewfinder. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you're a better cameraman than me. I'm just going to piggyback on you. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. That's, that's TNA, ladies and gentlemen. It's meta to them. But, so now we uh, have our next knockouts match. Gail, Kim, and Mickey James. It's good. This is a much better match than uh, Madison Rain and Velvet. I'll give it yeah. that. Again, not, not many implications, so... Can't really get too excited about it, but nonetheless, it was very much marred with Gale doing a lot of a lot of leg work on uh, on Mickey, just targeting the leg, uh, doing doing sort of a Brock lock, but not really. Um, and I forget, like she, she, I forgot what exactly the move. Was. She did something quite impressive with it. Um, I, I wish I could remember because I, I'd like to give him more credit, but damn. Well, there were. They were talented. They're very two yeah. talented wrestlers that made it work very well. And uh, yeah. but ends in standard fashion. Mickey eats the title belt, and that's it. Gail didn't even bother to cover up with uh, to follow it up with an eat the heat. Just you eat title belt, and that's it. Mm. So yeah, I not really uh, much to say about the future of this div- division. Yeah, it's kind, of, it's kind of a throwaway match at best, but it does have Gail Kim in it, so she's probably one of the That's best things. Me. This, ta- this division is like kind of circling the drain, despite the fact that it has a lot of legit talent. In yeah, it. a lot of legit ta- talent, and they do give them time, like unlike uh, WWE. Um, so I'm really like, I have no idea what. The, what is the thing that they put on this to just to make it so apathetic compared like I think it's because they they really need the monster a monster heel. Like not doesn't have to be karma, doesn't have to be awesome con, just they need another monster heel to come back because Well remember when the first time that uh Gail was in the company and she was the face and how much more better she was at playing a face than a heel? She fucking had Kong to play off of, and again, doesn't discredit her, but like, that it, uh, Kong certainly helped. Um, went a very long way. But there are more talented monster heel female wrestlers in the Indies, and I'm sure they could pick up on the cheap. Because I'm pretty sure. The T- does... Well, I think oh, the problem oh. is that TNA isn't looking to hire female women because they're just 
because all we've all seen the commercials that they're playing. Like they're trying to go with this whole March Madness thing right now, where they're all wearing mm-hmm. their where they're all wearing workout gear and playing basketball and shit. They're just trying to get like the <coughs> pocket demographic, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> to be interested, and they don't really care about wrestling capacity anymore. Like they've got attractive women. That's good enough. I. I... Yes, so I guess they're going the Divas route, which is quite sad. Slowly, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just kind of a trophying away into mediocrity. Man, I thought this was going to be the writer segment because this was a good match. Uh, yeah. bar, uh, barring the fact that I couldn't remember something that I liked about it. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, after this match, we go to Ken Anderson and fuck this! Fuck this hard! Oh. Fuck this guy! What the fuck are you thinking? And here's the here's the funny He's thing. Back. Shut up, shut up, all of you, shut up. You you have given AJ Styles nothing to work with in this company. The one feud you're giving him, and you're replacing him with Ken Anderson for no goddamn reason. Yeah. Um. And the the best what? the you, you want to know? Hey, best. hey, uh, backlash. You want to know why? Why? You want to know why? Why? Because TNA is staffed by assholes! Ah! Oh, okay. We definitely know who's broken now. Yeah, I think uh, Backlash pulled a Lars and ran into the... Okay, but they, they, they do a really stupid gag where, where Kazarian and Christopher Daniels walk up to Anderson with the water cooler like they're going to talk by the water cooler. <laughs> This is just a day at the office, guys. What are you thinking? Oh, no, it's small <laughs> lemonade, though. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure what to think of that joke. It's uh, as it's it's really funny in a bad way. You, you know the, what the problem is? <laughs> Ken Anderson is legitimately charismatic, and he can cut a good promo if he's given good shit to work with. Yeah, CWE. Yeah. See fucking that, that new web show called Undisputed. Is in it with uh, Mick Foley and uh, the the Cobra Kai instructor and a bunch of other a bunch of other people. He's good in it. <laughs> He's pretty decent. Actor. What show is this? Uh, it's an online show called Undisputed. That's, that sounds like quite the combo of people. It's actually it's a very like dark look at um at behind the scenes of wrestling. They have like the the the. The bookers who who are completely crazy. They have create. They have a uh, talent relations guy who who means absolutely nothing and is and is trying to find value. They have the the bitter old guy who stiffs everyone around him just for fun. So who, who is Mick Foley, by the way? So it's uh, what would happen if Johnny Ace was running talent, Russo was running, and for some reason Bob Holly was at the top. I guess so. <laughs> it's it, it's. Funnier than it sounds, but I would love to see Bob Core with the world title. I would love to see that. But it just—it's what's good about it is that it just—it takes like a very dark and satirical look at pretty much every side of it, from the fans to the to the performers. And they're they're like if they keep it going, they're actually characters that I could that you could probably go to appreciate. But um, enough of that. No, Ken Anderson versus Chris Daniels. <laughs> um. Daniels has been uh, the key word here once again undermined. Anderson is not really that good in the ring in the first place. Um, well, this is his first match in how long? Yeah, but really didn't change it. Um, well, of course not. not Ken not Anderson. To say about this. Um, I mean, if you look at Ken Anderson's playbook, all it has is gum underlined twice and an asshole written down the margins all up and down it. Hmm. Yeah. Um, basically, this is to, to, make, to put over returning Ken Anderson and to make the, the new uh, heel team or heel association not really look that good. Ken Anderson and AJ Styles are now the buddy buddy team. Just good lord almighty. Uh. The only way, AJ must have Stockholm Syndrome at this point. Like, I know WWE is probably off the table for him at this point, but I'm sure he could get way more respect and more money if he did an indie circuit or went back to Japan. 
Why does he keep putting up with TNA's horse shit? I don't yeah, know. It, it, AJ Styles Probably. is pretty much the abusive housewife. I don't know. I guess he feels like if he just keeps sticking it out, maybe they'll do something with him. But again, we've already talked about uh, TNA's pretty, pretty much abusive way that they treat their talent, trying to convince them that they can't make it anywhere but TNA. Yeah, that's very scummy. That's... For a biz, for a business that's known to be scummy, that's and wow. like let's face it, B- Bischoff is pretty much the number one scum fuck in the industry. Ugh. Well, they're, oh, they're over scum fucks, believe me. No, no, you go to the like Ian Rotten. I can just name off the top of my head. Yeah, at least Eric Bischoff I... didn't sell him, didn't sell Jeff Hardy the drugs he got fucked up on in Victory Road. Yeah, and also oh, the guy God. during a the that Randy or- that's Randy Orton, a Randy Savage tribute show, who, who, who <laughs> didn't have a who didn't have a fucking bell, so he said "ding" ten. <laughs> it's the mic. Oh God, oh. you got to be kidding me, Bill. That, they didn't never... like an empty coffee can today. No, the guy went to the ring and said. <laughs> And it's not like you couldn't just do, like, a moment of silence. Like, I saw CZW shows where they didn't have a bell when Eddie Guerrero died, and they're all, like, just be silent for, like, a minute. No, he had no other ring. And those air horns won't stop. No, the air horns stopped. Everyone was actually silent, except except I think at one one show there was one guy who screamed, fuck that, and he got kicked out. He said, fuck Eddie. And they kept being quiet until the moment was up, and yep. then they immediately tossed him. Yep. But yeah, uh, Jeff Hardy, backstage, saying as little as, as possible in any given Impact episode he can. Good. Um, cares does about he have it. shit on his face? Promo. How much shit does he have on his face? I don't know. He don't didn't care. have any at this point, but that's going to change in a little bit because up next we have yeah. Kurt Angle versus Garrett Bischoff in a five-minute challenge. And uh, there are sharp objects on my desk. I wish to use them on my face. <laughs> no, don't. You'd end up with uh, stitching and tattoos worse than Garrett Bischoff. Wait, no, that's fucking impossible. <laughs> you know, I mean, I. I... I have to hand it to... I've seen some bad tattoos. I've never seen somebody do their name on their chest like it was a gas station sign. I have not... Yeah. I, for, I, all I the, t- for all the TNA marks that come to us and complain about our opinions, I have not yet seen one person step up to defend Garrett fucking Bischoff. I <laughs> defy any of you listening to this to find one defense of him. Oh, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Fuck the Hulk Hogan. I, 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 yeah, like, Hulk, Hulk Hogan was saying that Garrett is the future of wrestling. Oh God! Of course, this is also the same man that said Abyss was the next John Cena, and I don't want to sound like I'm bashing Abyss because I don't want to. But this is such a stupid comment. If I could smack Hogan, I would. If I could just reach into space and have my hand. Pop out of nowhere, out of like a portal, and just go. Psh, psh, psh. I yeah, would. He's slapping his uh, balls while he's making another uh, porno video there, did he? Yeah. Oh. And uh, in terms of Hogan, when you when you look at Garrett Bischoff's offense throughout the match, you could just reflect upon it and say to yourself, you know, yeah, it really does seem like he was trained by a washed up uh, Hulk Hogan, because all he did was punch, and he put his foot up to boot. <laughs> I like I like that. I like that. In order to sell the idea that Hulk Hogan really trained him, because you know who's who's better to train you than an eight year old with a fucking steel rod up his spine, because it's the only way to support his body. That they actually have him doing the Hogan offensive turret punches. And okay, no, that's you just, just stand right in the middle of the ring with your fists up. It'll just run at you. Revolver Works man. That. that it would be funny and it would be clever on their part, but no, it's a coincidence, Garrett. It's just shit. Yes, I know. Because anything remotely funny or clever is always an accident in TNA. Yeah, there, there's really not much difference between old and decrepit and green as goat shit. Mm. <laughs> but hey, um... Emphasis on the goat shit! Yeah. <laughs> the, 
the, the gimmick of this, which we didn't uh, mention beforehand, as far as I recall, is uh, that this is a beat the clock challenge for five minutes, and Garrett holds out. Um, he it, r- right before time? Angle could get the pin after after an Angle slam. Yeah, first of all, a wow, that's a great way to put over Garrett. I know we don't really want to see him, but he got his ass kicked for five minutes, and Kurt Angle was just a bit too cocky in doing moves. And second. I think this is the first time Kurt's ever lost one of these five-minute challenges. You might be right, but I just don't care. And and afterwards, what happens? Kurt gets his ass kicked up and down the ring until Jeff Hardy shows up to save him. Jeff Hardy, who is now covered in face paint. <laughs> Damn, he, can, he must have like a... a what the fuck is that term? A stencil, a stencil that he can just like lay onto his face for that instant face paint. Well, I don't know. It was only covering half his face, so I guess he did it in a hurry. Maybe that's why it took him so long between <clears throat> uh, between when the bell rung and uh, Garrett Bischoff was getting attacked. <laughs> he just says to himself, thirty seconds going. No, he's gonna break my leg." And then finally, Jeff Hardy runs his ass. Jeff down. Hardy's looking at the monitor, going, "Shit, shit, shit." Oh, I gotta get that eye on there. Uh, or, or, enough, or, go, or it's go, like. Go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, it's main event time, or and it's what, uh, more or less the main event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the la- yeah, the, the last not match main event. on the show. Let's say. I mean, I guess you, yeah, James Storm is the the pretty much the top super um, since he is challenging for the title. I mean, count like Jeff Hardy, whatever, but. Well, I'm like. Jeff this is a gun match. Jeff Garrett and Storm, and I guess you could argue Sting, are the only faces on TNA now. I mean, maybe you could argue Eric Young, but he's more just crazy, and people like that. You're talking about guys in the top card. Yeah, top, yeah. I'm, no, I mean all of TNA. I can't think of many faces in TNA. That, that, that are pure faces, not like Shades yeah, of Grey. I'm cons- and well, I'm just convinced that TNA <laughs> loves having heels because we have not one but two matches at Victory Road that are heel versus heel. <laughs> mm. And yeah, that'll put that. Bad when it was going to be face versus face a couple uh, months back. Uh. Anyway, it's Gunner and James Storm. James Storm knows what he's doing. Gunner doesn't. Gunner's still got that fucked up hair and those stupid tattoos. He was, he looks like Froto Crimson. Like, that was the first generation of Crimson before they got the Goldberg gene settled down and actually working. No, it's like you t- you take a car of, like, uh, you take a car of uh, Crimson, you scrunch out the, the features a little, make it, a, make it a bit wider, put on a, a brown ponytail and a goatee. You got and, and give him a default expression where it looks like he has to take a shit all the time. Yes, <laughs> so if you want, if you ever, if well, TNA ever makes a new wrestling game, haha, and yeah. one of them is missing, you know how to make the other guy out of the first guy. Yeah, what do we know? We're just fat computer <laughs> marks. <laughs> uh, but basically, it, it ends like the match should end. James Storm hits the code breaker, which he, which I actually only found out tonight that he calls the closing time and, and the last call super kick. Did you know that James Storm has a gimmick where he drinks beer? I did not know that. Because TNA, at least it's not killer spelt backwards levels, but God damn. <gasps> So yeah, G- Gunner and James Storm have a match. Mm, yeah. yeah, the match was all uh, right, mostly because Storm can carry a person like Gunner to a good match. I mean, yeah, still it's still always fun to watch. As much as we don't like Gunner, he's not like at Garrett Bischoff levels of suck. So they can be dragged out of him with somebody talented like James Storm, but. As we said, this is only the final match of the evening. This is not, in fact, the main event of Impact. <laughs> oh, fuck. No. After Storm and Bubba just kind of look at each other, we get the contract signing. Woo! 
Contracts! And right. they, they, they kind of just go right into it. There's no entrances. It's just, here's the contract signing. Totally non-sequitur. But yeah, um, basically, like, the gist of, like, the entire promo that Rude cuts against Sting is what I've been, uh, what I hinted at in the beginning, and what I'm surprised you you almost got to when you were speaking about Rude's uh, little segment. He elaborates the point that um, he, he says... He he says, I look at you, Sting. I I look at you from 22 years ago, the first time you won your world championship and you beat Ric Flair. And you you see me as like the newer version of that, except I'm stronger, faster, smarter, better looking, and I'm much better as a world champion. And basically what you're doing is you're keeping the young guys out of the spotlight. You just have to to wrestle wrestle the world champion, wrestle the main eventer, so you could push push away all this like great talent that's that's in the back there. Here here's my point. This that sounds like Russo. Because it's the the new blood like the 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 young guys rebelling against the old guys except their heels. That sounds like Russo, which in my opinion blends credence to the to the idea that they're still going under his storylines and we haven't seen uh haven't actually seen Bruce Pritchard's genuine work yet. That, that's kind of a. I can't argue with that point. That is a very Russo storyline. That it, it really is. I mean, for all the shit he talked about, oh, I want to push the new guys to the moon and keep all these old guys out. He always books stories that make the new guys seem like these petulant little bitches that need to be taught a fucking lesson. Um, if if only in an effort to to undermine like a lot of the things that the IWC set, says. But then again, that, that's kind of kind of taking a small name big ego stance. Well, did you see what Russo said when he left? That he was still the greatest booker in history, but his talents <laughs> were produced properly. Oh man, uh, just to oh, just to God. give a like unpaid and quick plug to CaveHabeCommentaries dot com. They're actually going to do they, their you shoot series. They're going to do one for uh, Vince Russo live. Oh, you're <laughs> fucking with me! I can't you're wait. Fucking with me! It's either going to be hard to watch or just a lot of fun. We okay, got now I got two things I have to get from KK Palmer Harris. I got to get the Jim Cornette DVD where he talks about his life in '95 WWE, 97. and this but fucking Vince Russo you shoot. This is going to be the most glorious oh, thing God. ever. Oh yeah, and get that Cornette timeline. It's it's a shitload of fun. Wait, wait, wait. Um, Considering that Corn or Cornette was able to get a uh, nail off and was able to get red to Dixie, and he's kind of neutral on Dixie when you really think about. Uh, Cornette, could you imagine if Kayfabe commentaries did a question from Cornette for Russo? Oh, he, he, he there might uh, start to get nervous, there. start sweating, start thinking someone's going to come out, come over and actually murder him. <laughs> that, that, that's what we call Mark. Well, um, considering Cornette wants to make I, it, but he um, wants to outlive Russo so he can piss on his grave. Yes, I remember him saying that many times. <laughs> I mean, this. I guess this all. This all. I, if I could make another point about this, it's kind of sad that we're still talking about Russo after he's been completely taken from the company. Although a lot, the, and yet his presence remains. Point. Yeah. But Rude basically, Rude has that point to make that, um, like Sting, you don't have what it takes. Um, you can't hang anymore. You're uh, holding down the the young guys and. And I'm not afraid of your your uh, face paint. I'm not afraid of your your craziness. That's just uh, an insecurity that you have to 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 mask the fact that you can't hang with us. And what ends up happening is Sting puts on the makeup and scares him anyway. <laughs> uh, Heel, yeah, but still. He just takes off his glasses and starts. I I, I guess, I guess he has the shit on his eyes. They had to have stolen. Uh, Rude's uh, entire thing from like a post from like Wrestling Zone or maybe even uh, the WrestleCraft ones or whatever really big rest or Woo. They might have taken it straight from fucking Woo if you know what that is. <laughs> because that, that, that sounds so much like what I would hear somebody who despises old people in wrestling say about TNA. And while, while I was listening to this promo, it's like, 
Rude is right. Yes! He's yes, exactly We were right talking point. about this earlier. Of, of There's course. something wrong with the show. You yeah. know, if Sting wasn't insecure about this, he would have left for WWE a year ago, had that awesome match with The Undertaker, and retired. But no, I, I have to. I have to admit, it must be insecurity because why? Like he get more money at WrestleMania. He gets so much fucking money at WrestleMania. He would go out, like yeah, of course, yeah. He had the jobs in the Undertaker, but and he'd it, go out on top. He and if he really is insecure, then he could prove himself as like a sort of helping hand. This is still just hypothetical because look at Kevin Nash. Like no one wanted to see him in the ring anymore, but he worked an 18 minute match with triple H a ladder match at that. Well, Same. some still say that was just friends wanking each other off on. True, my but, it was... but yeah, I have to go. I didn't want to believe it. Cause I actually still kind of like staying, but he still, he must be like, turning into Hogan or something. Like, maybe not as bad as Hogan, but he's going that route. I would have to say that Sting doesn't still got it. <laughs> no, he no, doesn't. Sting, Sting is done. Oh, really and, Kevin Nash. and it's really just going to be depressing this match because Sting's probably going to win. Well, of course he's going to win. That's why it's non-title. Unless they're going to pull, like, oh, but during this contract, which you didn't read, Rude, I made a title! <laughs> the fucking Joker! Yeah. Um, basically, oh it, that pretty much ends with uh, three day, Victory Road's three days later hanging over, and at that, <laughs> I guess we should run down the card. Yeah, let's uh, yeah. go through this. I've got it up right here. Uh, the first match on the card is Madison Rain versus Gail Kim for the Knockouts title. I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, <sighs> uh, I'm going to stay with Gail. Yeah, me because... too. She's kind of kind of getting an Austin Aries run in terms of this because yeah. she's just keeping the belt because there's really no one that they want to take it off of her because of her status. Um, um, yeah, I'm going to stick with Gail to... too. But, just and, because... and the fact of the matter is, like, I don't know why they, they do this for Madison Rain, but then again, they've given her this title a lot. Yeah, I think Madison's and gonna win, but, but it locked shit with it. Go ahead, Digi. Well, I think Madison's gonna win, but it, at lockdown, G- Gail's gonna win at Victory Road. Hmm. I think they're uh, gonna pat it out. A bit. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're, they're they're not afraid of tossing that belt around. Like with no, they're they're spin. definitely not. Remember last oh. not not last Victory Road, last lockdown when uh, Ray lost the title in three seconds to uh, Mickey. An injured Mickey James. Huh. Okay, yes. I'm, 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 t- I'm talking about what I would like to see, not what, oh, what, what, uh, what TNA is going to do. <laughs> They're two different things. I, I, that's that's I very that. true. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. That, that was just wishful thinking. <laughs> Obviously, Madison Rain's going to fucking win. Really? You think so? Yeah, because it was it was the opposite of what I think instinctually. Like I mean, how I uh, like it. beyond the result, like I'm, yeah. I am interested to see how uh, Gail could carry Madison uh, if yeah. if it could happen. Um, nothing much else. Anyways, our next match is uh, speaking of heel versus heel, Austin Aries versus Zema Ion for the X Division title. And you Aries. know what? Just because the universe hates me, I'm gonna say Zema Ion. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it's po- it's more possible than the, than the previous match we were discussing. Like because it. they hate us, and they're going to say, ha, 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 this guy broke another guy's neck and probably ended his career. Let's give him a title. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, he only mentioned Jesse Smith I would have to agree with that. In the Impact promo, and like hopefully that's one of that, that, the last that, times. That's, what's, sad, what's really sad is that is not unprecedented. No, remember, you're right. You're absolutely right. Remember when Rose, Rosie Wildlove took out uh, Daphne for what appears to be her career, and they instantly gave her a contract, and not till she fucked up two more times and they realized, wow, she can't wrestle. Yeah, I, of course. No, well, not even. Well, no, in terms of like, uh, oh, I thought you meant gimmicks. Because, like, obviously there's Owen 316 that might be one of the more famous examples. No, I'm talking about wrestler. I'm talking about Team 8 rewarding wrestlers who injure other wrestlers. Right. Yes, that was, that was my thinking behind it. 
Oh. And also Jeff Hardy giving uh, Ken Anderson the legit concussion for fucking up the chair spot that they did. Oh yeah. Oh god. That I oh god. Looking his head folded open. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh. And what did they do? Jeff Hardy didn't lose his push. No, that didn't lose until he completely and utterly melted down at Victory Road last year. And even then, as soon as he comes back, infinite title shots. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But yeah. He um... stole Batista's uh, game shark. (laughs) Batista Batista retired and threw it in the trash and just who happened to be walking behind him at the time. (laughs) But yeah, I guess next logical match after that would be... uh... Um, up next is Kazarian and Christopher Daniels versus yeah, AJ Styles and Mr. Anderson. Might Jesus good. Christ, I do not care. Might be good, might be bad, but yeah, I agree with that. Uh-huh. I'm going to say uh, AJ and Anderson simply because they want to give Anderson another win. And and in TNA's mind, who the fuck cares about Daniels and Kazarian? Well, not only that, but like Kaz is like kind of the renegade of those two. Like he's not necessarily working with Daniels; he's working for himself. But he'll kick AJ and Anderson's ass. So there might be a little cooperation, but afterwards, that Kazarian might just break off. And I'm gonna call a yeah. bullshit DQ victory. Yeah, you might be right. I, that, I, I don't know that, what side, but it's gonna happen. <laughs> that that would I would believe that if that happened, I would not be surprised if they did that. Remember, TNA doesn't give a shit about their pay-per-views. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Up next, we've got Crimson and Matt Morgan versus Magnus and Samoa Joe. And I'm going to say Magnus and Samoa Joe to retain. Oh, yeah. Just because it's obvious that Crimson and Morgan are going to be feuding with each other. Might be good, match. Might be no, match. no, I'm going to say Matt Morgan here. Their possibility. I'm saying Crimson and Matt Morgan, and they feud while they have the titles. That is a very TNA thing. I didn't think of that. Hell, they've done it before. Matt Morgan and Hernandez. <sighs> oh, God. Oh. I, ju- I just remember those dumb Matt Morgan promos. We are the TNA tag team. <laughs> You're not getting this, Emmy. <laughs> yeah. really I still think that's what he was talking about. Anyways. Next is Bully Ray versus James Storm. And if TNA does not have their heads up their asses, of course James Storm is going to win because he has to look good going into lockdown. But then again, this <laughs> yeah. is TNA. So Bully, Bully Ray put him over before. He's pretty good at doing that. Um, yeah, Bully Ray isn't going to pull anything, but TNA might just go, hey, why don't we have Bully Ray win? Because, you know, swerve. Again, still working under that Russo uh, book. Yeah. I, I gotta go with James Storm. Yeah, I'm going with Storm too. Rude or not rude? Uh, bu- bully, bully Ray is gonna. He, he's gonna be like the 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 huge obstacle that James Storm has to overcome in order to Which get is it. Which sad considering Root. Bully Ray being the huge obstacle is kind of funny for you to say considering he's dropped what looks like a hundred and fifty. Yeah, <laughs> he's like half the weight he was ten years ago. I mean, I have no idea what suddenly. Like, what clicked in Bully Ray's mind to go, you know what? I care again. <laughs> I care a hell of a lot. Probably like, just being being like, able to be pushed as a singles wrestler because Team 3D really didn't really make much of a difference. It's uh, like Devon's gotten bigger. <laughs> We've won the tag titles 20 times in three different federal. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, this is probably it. I- Up next, uh, we have Jeff Hardy versus Kurt Angle. Jeff. Yeah, it's going to be Jeff. Jeff, 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 Jeff. But no, I take that back. I take that back. It's going to be a no contest. Oh, of course it is. It's going to end We're going to every bullshit off. finisher. You know what you've lost over, actually? Because I doubt that we're going to get this after Kurt Angle versus Jeff Hardy. Eve, Robbie E versus Mr. Opponent. Oh, yeah. Robbie mm-hmm. E has an open challenge, but I don't have a graphic for that. Uh. I didn't bother to mention it. Hmm. I have completely forgotten that the television title existed in TNA. Well, it's like they promoted, but what's really to promote? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that there was actually a segment earlier where Robbie E. was backstage complaining about how the toy television title belt doesn't look anything like his belt. It does, but it's very small, whatever. And then Sting comes up and says, hey, you have an open challenge at Victory Road, whatever. Wait, you guys, you mean we forgot about the TNA television championship? 
get out of town. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck. Uh, you I, know I, what? I, I'm going to say, here's what I'm going to say. Kevin Nash shows up, wins, and turns it back into the Legends title. <laughs> Sorry about that. That or somehow Eric Young wins it and turns it back into the global title. I am the I am predicting that the television title will be a different title at the end of Victory Road. Well, I don't know if Eric Young would do that because he would have done it the last time he won the television title. Oh, that's true. That's true. Wait, no, with uh, ODB, he can restart World Elite somehow. Hmm. With uh, anyway, an American and a Canadian. <laughs> yeah, well, that's international, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> oh, God. Anyways, I guess all that's left is our main event, Sting versus Bobby Roode. And it's going to be Sting. What's you really know, I... about this is that this is a no-holds bar match. They portrayed Robbie Roode as this really selfish guy. What's stopping this from becoming... Bobby Roode electrocutes Sting to death with a cattle prod match. Actually, you know what? You know what? I I, I, I just I just realized that. Here's what's going to happen. Here's exactly what's going to happen. Throughout the night, we're going to be having Bobby Roode, and he's going to be talking into the camera saying, like, oh, I'm so great, I'm so great. Sting, he's insecure and shit. And he's going to be drinking. He's going to be throwing back shots because he's partying, because he's like, oh, tonight's in the bag. I, I just got to beat this old fucker, and, uh, and I'm done. And he is going to come down to the ring wobbling and oh, stumbling no. for himself, oh. looking all weird and shit. And Sting is going to look at him and like, really? This is happening again? I can't believe it. <laughs> and they'll ring the bell, and he'll pin him in 30 seconds. Oh, God. And as Sting is leaving, while Bobby Roode is passed out in the middle of the ring, he'll be saying, uh. this keeps happening. Why does this keep happening? These young <laughs> guys can't cut. This always keeps happening. Last year it was Jeff Hardy, and now it's Bobby Roode. It's, it's going to be a, a, a victory road tradition. To have yeah, a the main pop. event gets... Oh, my God. Oh, I am going to throttle you, Backlash, if that's what happened at the same for you. <laughs> Why are you okay. shooting the messenger? <laughs> All joking aside. If that happens, I'm driving to Orlando and I'm, 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 I'm burning the fire down. A... I'll, I'll, I'll burn the impact zone down. I will burn <laughs> the ground. Backlash, you know that doesn't work. They set the impact zone on fire once and it didn't stop a pay-per-view. <laughs> yeah, and it gave us a good Monty Brown promo. <laughs> <laughs> It saved us from having to watch the, uh, yeah, the James game. You can't wrestling. kill it, even with fire. <laughs> wow, you know, uh, but like seriously, with I'm going to have to go with Bobby Roode because I'm erring on the side of logic, as foolish as that might be. <laughs> <laughs> logic. Yeah, Bobby Roode. Actually, if everything's built up right, then James Storm's just going to beat him at uh, lockdown for the for the championship. But I want to say Bobby Roode, but. I know this is TNA, so Sting. <laughs> well, Backlash. maybe I'll be pleasant. I, I, I already gave my prediction. That is my yeah. official prediction. <laughs> All right, so we have two for Rude, one for Sting, and one for bringing back Victory Road 2011. <laughs> Or what they could do. At least if they do that, we can have have another clusterfuck show. People liked that last year. Is have Jeff Hardy come out drunk during the match. (laughs) Not be part of the match. Yeah, he comes out during the pay-per-view and does the exact same thing. He's so fucked up. He thinks it's in it. He thinks it's a year ago, and he's going to try again. (laughs) (laughs) I'm groundhog. This shit happens. <laughs> I think I've officially flipped my lid. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Oh. Let's end this show before it kills us with a this nice game of uh, rainbows of, of of what is, is probably our favorite game, what gets more screen time than Jay Lethal. And I'm gonna start with obvious traps for weddings in the <laughs> ring get more screen time than Jay Lethal. Alright. 
here's mine. Because I just remembered what I liked about the Mickey James versus Gail Kim match. Basically, Mickey was selling the, the leg the entire time, and then she's down on the ground, and I'm like, oh, man, this is what the time when she does that kip up, and like this will be a bad thing, because it's basically like a no-sell. She just springs back up. She does the kip up, and then she starts selling. She's like, oh, man, maybe I should have done that. Gets more screen time than Jay Lethal. Psychology gets more screen time than Jay Lethal. I, I, I don't know how to fit that in. Holy Co- Coca-Cola uh, suing Garrett Bischoff because he stole their font. <laughs> <laughs> I would not want my product even tangentially related to Carrot Bischoff, so I would agree with Coca-Cola there. <laughs> oh my god. I didn't even think and, of that. And All I'm right. going to say the the caps of Kryptonite of Bully Ray gets more screen time than We do uh, that every week. Someone Okay, says- alright, I'll pick something else then. I'm sorry, I haven't been here for a few months, but all right then. I'm going to pick Hogan Fu gets more screen time <laughs> than Jay Lethal. Appreciate it. It's an actual type of martial art now. Yep, exactly. It's officially recognized. Yeah. Yeah. All right, wait, I think. Wait for it to come to the Olympics. You're going to see the rock and sock and robots go into the Olympics with Hogan Fu matches. And they're going to be hawking up and doing the thing where they go, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. But and then waving the finger. A, a, key hey. opponent, a key point of Hogan Fu is the point. You can't forget the point. All right. Uh, that's going to do it for Dark Match this week. Don't forget to subscribe to us on Blip TV or YouTube. You can keep up to date with all our videos. You can also like us on Facebook. We're all over there. Uh, give us a like. Leave a comment if you if you want. You can also follow us on Twitter at Dark Match Wrestling. And you can also follow each of us individually on Twitter. I'm sure all our names are appearing down there at the bottom. Uh, we are also on TRE Productions. They have graciously agreed to host our videos. So check us out over there, along with all the other great stuff that goes on up there. And we are also on Reviewatopia in the community section. Um, lots of great stuff over there as well. And last but not least, visit us on the Spoonie Experiment forums where you can uh, chat with all of us, shoot the shit, and all, and all that stuff. And for everyone here at Dark Match, I am your foxy friend, Backlash. And I'm the fox that rocks your socks, Digi Fox. I'm Christopher says Dark Matches Mastodon on the Monotone. And I'm the Revolver Man, back after a few months. Good night and good luck. Yeah.